Cymanti, the reviled bug tribe. Many a player will tell you that ever since the Path of the Ocean update that nerfed their best counters, they are by far the strongest tribe, being able to use their high movement and high damage units to completely overrun you with no counterplay whatsoever. Attempts have even been made to prove that they are overpowered with stats. Some players have even gone so far as to suggest that they are so completely dominant that they should be completely disabled in multiplayer until they are nerfed. In a way, I understand why people struggle so much against Siamanti. They have a relatively strong early game economy and their units hit like a truck and go super fast. I think they're also tougher to understand for new players. And it's easier to look at a tribe like Siamanti and say that they're overpowered by pointing at a unit unique to them like the Hackaspod compared to a normal tribe that doesn't really have anything unique to them. It's also easier to punish mistakes as Simanti. What do I mean by this? If your opponent is playing a standard tribe and you misplace a unit or underdefend a city in a way that leaves you vulnerable if your opponent correctly plans out their turn or uses roads, it's much harder for them to take advantage of that as they have to see that to place the roads and then move their units and keep all of their stars in check, which is way more complex than Simanti, who doesn't have to worry about things like zone of control or roads. All they really have to do is click on their units and see, oh, I can attack this city or I can attack this unit. This probably contributes to the fact that Simanti is seen as OP by less experienced players who make more mistakes. However, don't start thinking that you have to play perfectly or not make any mistakes against Simanti, because you definitely don't. I make mistakes all the time, and I still win most of my games. This guide, I hope, will help point out some of the more common and easier to fix mistakes, as well as giving you a general game plan so you know what texts and strategies to pursue against Simanti. Because at the end of the day, I don't think that they're nearly as good as they're made out to be. I think these strategies shouldn't be too tough to implement in your game, even if you're not a super experienced player. Hopefully after this guide, Simanti will stop bugging you. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's get started. Also, all the footage in this guide comes from a bunch of live games I played on small and normal Drylands and Pangea maps, because I'm reusing a bunch of old replays. These strategies do still work on smaller maps, but it might be slightly harder to execute them. I'll talk more about lakes at the end of the video, and we'll mention them throughout the video as well. Although the strategies that you're going to be using on lakes are not hugely different. I'm playing Umaji in all of these videos, but you don't need to. I will go over some try recommendations at the end of the video as well. So make sure that you stay to the end to get those recommendations. The first thing you want to do against Simanti is discover that you are playing against Simanti. Right on turn zero, I always check the score of my opponent. Because of the way that score is calculated, not all tribes start with the same score. Simanti is the only tribe that starts with 630 score, or 635 if they spawn next to a lighthouse. Right away, just by checking the score, you can tell you are playing at Simanti, and that might affect the text you go for and the strategies you employ. I tend to check the score often throughout the game to try and get an idea of how my opponent is doing. And if you're really diligent and thorough on counting their score, you can get a large amount of info from it. Once you know you're playing at Simanti, you're probably going to do a pretty standard next couple of turns. Simanti's so probably not going to get their first hexapod until around turn 4 or 5, so that should give you enough time to pick up maybe one or two cities. Once you've got those two cities, this is where key tip number one comes in. Explorers. Against Simanti, and actually most tribes to be honest, explorers are vitally important and often underused. Explorers can reveal your opponent and save you from getting surprised by boosted hexapods, but most importantly, they help you position your units safely. If you're lucky, you might even reveal the enemy shaman and be able to snipe it. By the way, here's a quick tip about the Shaman. Simanti Shaman is the lifeblood of their tribe. Without their Shaman, they can't boost, and their units become much less scary. If it's possible to kill their Shaman, it's almost always worth it, even if it means missing a ruin or not capturing a city or something. It'll probably be pretty easy to get whatever you're sacrificing back when your opponent can't boost their units. Without their Shaman, it'll be even easier to shut them down. And it's not uncommon for your opponent to just resign after losing their Shaman. Even if they don't, though, the rest of the game should be pretty simple to win for you. But back to explorers, you probably don't want to go for an explorer in your capital, unless maybe you're playing a corner spawn on a tiny map. But in your second or third city, I would strongly consider one. But don't necessarily get the explorer right away. A common mistake I see players make is not properly funneling the explorer. Explorers always seek out the nearest fog within a four tile radius. If there's no fog within four tiles, it'll move randomly. If there's multiple tiles of fog with equal distance, it will pick up fog at random. That means you can control your explorers to improve their value by revealing tiles of fog that you don't want your explorers to head towards. I even often delay upgrading my city a turn or two just to be able to reveal fog and coax my explorer into going the right direction. This is partially why I don't normally recommend an explorer in the capital, as you can't really force it to go in the right direction, and it could end up going behind you unless you're in a corner. 
Of course, you could always risk it, but it could cost you the game. At around the same time that you're getting these new cities and explorers, you should be strongly considering key tip number two, riders. Riders are generally just a great unit against all tribes, but even more so against Simanti. With roads, riders outrange boosted hexapods, and can easily kill off Simanti's whole hexapod army and retreat safely. Even before you get roads, though, riders are great at slowing down Simanti's advances. If you place them just outside their max range, which remember is 2 tiles plus melee range for unboosted hexapods, and 3 tiles plus melee range for boosted hexapods, then they can't really advance a whole ton without just getting killed by your riders. This should help you delay it for long enough, and it probably won't even be that long to get roads and start pushing back Simanti. If they leave their hexapods within range of your riders, rush them forward, kill them units, and retreat them back to safe tiles wherever possible. In fact, you don't even have to just do this against hexapods. This is very effective against centipedes and dubuxes too. Simanti doesn't really have any great options to deal with huge amounts of riders, with the best options being swordsman and Keton, which I will go more in depth about later. Also, use riders for tip number three, create a dead zone. Just to reiterate what I've already said, make sure Simanti cannot advance easily. Using riders, create a dead zone for their units that they cannot easily traverse because you or riders will kill them. Because Simanti's units tend to be pretty squishy, riders and roads will probably completely zone them out of an area, which means they won't be able to easily attack you. Simanti thrives on early attack, and the longer you keep up this dead zone, the better your chances. Of course, if there's an opportunity to, to advance, definitely do, especially because taking their cities is just an undeniably good thing and will win you games. But don't worry if you're not able to do that and have to settle for just holding them back. But back to your main strategy. Keep expanding as you are getting riders, and get lots of riders. You will need a lot of them. Prioritize getting a, like a decent defensive slash exploration force over building your economy. Don't entirely neglect your economy, but remember, if you're dead or only have two cities, your economy is not going to matter. Luckily, explorers plus riders should lend themselves nicely to scooping up lots of cities around the map. Round turn 5 to 7. Simanti might get their first centipede. This is very early, so you'll have to be expecting this early on and starting to repair quickly. One of the best counters to centipedes is coincidentally also riders, which is great for you, as you should have maybe 6 or 7 riders around the time the centipede starts posing a threat. Again, treat the centipede like a hexapod and give it a wide berth. Centipedes have 2 movement with no segments, 3 movement when boosted, and 1 movement with any segments, even if it's boosted. Note that Simanti can explode the segments on a centipede, potentially giving it the movement it needs to siege a city or get a kill. The last thing you want is to let the centipede start getting lots of segments. Wait for it to move forwards, or if you have roads, rush some riders for it to kill it. Do not leave your units in its range if possible. Centipedes only take 5 riders to kill, or 6 riders if it has a defense bonus, unlike giants which take 10 riders to kill. And against centipedes, all the riders will survive if they're at max health. This means you can kill centipedes and still keep building up a rider army. Once you have a significant rider army, you can start focusing more on an economy and slowly advancing. With hexapods and centipedes pretty much dealt with, Simanti won't have many other good early game options. This is the perfect time to catch up econ-wise if you were behind. At this point, we get to Simanti's mid to late game options. Simanti late game options tend to be inferior to all of the other tribes, which makes this nice. If they go for Dumuxes, perfect. Riders are an excellent counter to Dumuxes. Their high cost, high damage, low defense makes them weak against unit spam, especially rider spam. Boosted, they have 4 movement, equivalent to riders on roads. However, if they kill a rider or two, they only take 4 riders to kill, and they don't hit back very hard. At this point, you should have plenty of riders, so losing 1 or 2 shouldn't be that big of a deal, and it will also be way easier to replace them to Dumux. Dumuxes cost more than 3 times the price of riders, and will very, very rarely kill more than 1 or 2. The turns they spend getting the resources that they will then waste on buying the techs up to shock tactics and then waste on Dumuxes will allow you even more time to build up your army and build your economy as you go towards the knights. It often would have been much better for them to just keep on spamming centipedes or hexapods or to go for one of the other options that I'll go over next. If they go for Exida or Psyche, that's also not too challenging to deal with. Pretty simple to go riders and roads to kill those, and then knights later. Exida and Psyche tend to be better on water maps, which I will talk more about later. Against Swordsmen and Ketons, your options are much more limited. These units tend to do better against Riders. Riders will still be okay, but consider Archers and or Catapults to deal with these. Also, Giants are a good choice, or if you're playing Illyrion and can get Dragons, use those. Ketons in particular are very strong against Riders, and can be gotten very quickly, sometimes even before Simanti goes for Hexapods. In this case, you're probably going to want to go for Archers. It's not perfect, as Archers die to Hexapods easily, and you'll have a much harder game, but it's not that bad for you. I should also bring up here that these units do not have the creep ability. 
The creep ability is actually what stops Simanti's units from being able to use roads. So that means units like the Keton or their default warrior can use the roads that you place down. This also stacks with boost. Just something to keep in mind so you don't end up in situations like this one. Now's a good time to bring up archers as an option against Simanti. Archers actually work very well against Simanti. Their ability to shoot over centipede heads at their tails, as well as their range, makes them probably the best counter to centipedes. They're very effective against Dumuxes, Keton, Psyche, and Swordsmen, and they don't really have any hard counters from Simanti. However, they're not the best against Hexapods. Their inability to retreat and their low defense makes them vulnerable, but they are still able to lock down zones, and they do one-shot Hexapods. They're not super easy to get to in the tech tree all the time, and you will likely lose a lot more archers than riders, but they are still effective. Riders are still generally better, I'd say, but if you are able to get a decent amount of both riders and archers, you'll be able to deal with pretty much anything Simanti throws at you. Against cloaks, riders and knights are your go-to. Simanti cloaks are scary, as boost as a mechanic works very well with cloaks and their creep ability. Try to keep some units near the front lines to catch cloaks early, and maybe chop your forest to prevent daggers from getting defense bonuses. Simanti and cloaks go very well together, as they're also on the tech line that gives ketons, which are probably Simanti's best response to riders. Fortunately, Simanti players tend to just go for the much simpler and easier strategy of spamming hexapods and later Dumuxes, which can be countered much more easily than these cloaks. Last thing I forgot to mention earlier. Don't get city walls against Simanti. Always pick resources. If you pick a city wall, they'll just poison any unit you have defending the city, making the wall do literally nothing. Now to talk about lakes. Lakes is Simanti's best map, as it's harder to safely position your units with all of the water everywhere. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do but to try your best to work with the terrain. Strongly consider archers, as they can shoot over water and will be able to kill Psyche that are out of reach of your riders. The best water unit against Simanti's Rechi is the Rammer, but if you are able to achieve naval dominance, scouts and bombers will keep them off the water and shut down their land capabilities as well. Just remember that Simanti can place algae down within their borders and send out loads of hexapods to quickly kill off those ships. Simanti will likely try to poison your units and get an algae bridge going, so do your best to avoid letting them kill poisoned units in spaces that help them. Tribe Recommendations If you are constantly struggling against Simanti, and are wondering what tribes tend to do well against them, I have a couple suggestions. Umaji is a great choice, as they start with riders, and aren't hurt as badly by the nerfs to lumber huts in the latest update. Because they spawn with riders, they can often outexpand Simanti, and starting with the best counter of the hexapods is always nice. Their lower rates of forest and mountains also benefit them, as Simanti loses some of the power of the creep ability. They're also a free tribe, which is nice, so you won't have to buy any more if you don't have them all. Other great options include Zabasi and Imperius, who both have some of the strongest economies in the game. Zabasi also has lower mountain and forest rates. Barter, Yadak, and Illyrion are also strong, but Illyrion is very tough to master. They're one of the best tribes in the game, but they're not really a tribe I would recommend for newer players, so keep that in mind if you're a less experienced player. All these tribes are great in general for her smaller, more land-based maps, or it likes too. So even if you're not up against Simanti, you'll still do fine. Of course, you can beat Simanti with any tribe, but these ones will give you even more of an edge. If you're playing as a special tribe, the strategies might differ a bit. As a Lyrion, it's probably pretty similar to a standard tribe. Just use Riders. Polytars can also be good against Doomices and Centipedes. As Polaris, Riders are also the answer. You can use Ice instead of Roads to outrage Hexapons too. Against Ketons, freeze them and then kill them with Riders. As Aquarion, try to get rapid control over the water. Snipe hexapods that they leave on the coast with amphibian. On land, use archers. But the main thing is that you want to control the water and attack from the water. Consider playing on Pangaea instead of Drylands. Simanti tends to have a much harder time getting centipedes on Pangaea due to capital spawns favoring the coast. And this also leads to a lower chance of meeting them super early. Explorers are also easier to funnel as they get stopped by going off the sides by the coastline. There is a bigger risk of Psyche, though. Also, if you're still struggling, or you just detest playing against Simanti even after this guide, try playing on a different map type or size. More watery maps and bigger maps also lead to very interesting games, and you'll see Simanti significantly less. Give them a try! The second last thing to remember is that Polytopia is not always fair. There's a lot that comes down to chance in a Polytopia game. Sometimes the map just generates really unfairly. Sometimes the explorer just turns around and goes the wrong way, even if you do your best to funnel it. Just remember not to get discouraged, and think of these games as a learning experience. Which leads me nicely into the last thing you need to remember. Getting good takes practice. You're not probably not going to finish this video, and never lose assignment again. It's going to take time and practice to learn how to properly funnel explorers. It's going to take time learning to position your units better. But you will get better. 
And I think that as you get better, you'll find Symantec is not as good as you once thought it was. So I'll leave you with that. Good luck against Symantec. You can do it. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, or it helped you, or you learned something, leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have an idea for another Polytopia video, or what your favorite video tip from the video is, or if there was something I could have done better. Anyways, see you in the next video. Thanks.